try it. When I was little, my mummy took me to play with my friends. We walked through a wood to the playground. Wooly came too. We get to the special clearing. The wood was quiet. The wood had trees. The trees were tall. I liked looking high up in the trees. They touched the sky. When the wind blew, the leaves swished. When the wind stopped blowing, the leaves stopped rattling, and it was very quiet. Some leaves had fallen off the trees. We walked in the leaves. Hi, hi, can you kick them? I kicked the leaves. Mummy kicked the leaves too. We kicked the leaves. It was fun. We made lots of noise. When we stopped kicking leaves, it was very quiet. On the way to see my friends, we heard a roaring noise. There was a waterfall. The water fell over and rushed and gushed into a river. The waterfall made so much noise, we shouted. Hello, Mummy! Hello, Tig! When we left the waterfall, it was quiet. We climbed steps up a little hill. Timmy and Louise and Angel should be here soon, said Mummy. From the top of the hill, we could see a ship in the trees. We made lots of noises. Timmy! Angel and Louise! Is there anyone there? When we stopped shouting, it was very quiet. We found some planks. We'll wait here, said Mummy. Timmy, Louise and Angel will be here any minute, so why don't we wait here for them? I didn't like waiting. It was quiet, very quiet. I didn't like the quiet. Hey, Tig, the quiet can be boring. And the quiet can be scary too. The quiet can make you think there's nothing there. But the quiet isn't quite as quiet as you may think. Shh! You just have to listen a little more. And when you listen, you can hear lots of friendly sounds. A bird singing. A pigeon cooing. A dog barking. Woof, woof. The leaves tinkling in the breeze. A twig breaking. <laughs> That's your mummy. So go for it, Tig. Have fun in the quiet and listen to all the different sounds. You might even hear Timmy and Louise before mummy does. Yes, I thought. I listened to all the different sounds. And then I heard the sound I'd been waiting for. Mummy, I can hear Tammy, Louise and Angel. Oh, right, let's go and find them then. Hi! Hi. Angel, Tammy and Louise. Hello! We explored all the adventure playthings. We made lots of noise in the wood. <laughs> There wasn't any quiet while we played. When Whirly slid down the slide, Angel's mummy got a shock. It's only a toy spider. When we walked home, it was quiet again in the wood. I like the quiet and I love Whirly. The haircuts. When I was little, my hair grew long. Who's that? I liked my hair long. One day, my mummy took me for a ride on a bus with no roof. On the bus, we saw lots of things. We saw a big crane. <gasps> oh, wow, take look, take look. An aeroplane landed on the water. Some things I didn't see. I just saw my hair. That night, Mummy brushed my hair. Oh my it was all tangly. You're going to have to get your hair trimmed soon. 
The next day, Mummy and Daddy took me to see a play. Mummy tied my hair in bunches. You won't be able to see the play, said Mummy. Willie came too. There was a funny lady. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, nursing. The funny lady had bunches, just like mine. Do you like my bunches? You do? You've got bunches like mine, haven't you? What's your name? Tig. Tig. That's a lovely name. Well, this little ditty is especially for you. One bunch, two bunch, kiss my cheeks, oh, one bunch. Funny lady sang a song all about my bunches. I'm happy with my bunches, my bonny, bonny bunches. And when I sleep and hop and flounce, my bonny bunches bob and bounce. I'm happy with my bunches, my bonny, bonny bunches. And when I sleep and hop and flounce, my bonny bunches bob and bounce. Night, Mummy brushed my bunches away. Once you get a wee trim, you won't have all these tangles at the bottom here, will you? The next day, Mummy took me to the hairdresser. Who's next? Said the hairdresser. You coming over? Have a seat. I jumped into the seat. The hairdresser picked up a big pair of scissors. Ah, uh, no, I want my bunchies! I didn't like the scissors. I wanted my bunchies. Do you want to come over, Brendan? I didn't want my hair cut. Hey, Tig, those scissors might look a bit scary, but don't worry, cutting hair doesn't hurt. Snip, snip, snippity snip. Look at Brendan. Brendan doesn't mind having his hair cut. He loves it. Snip, snip, snippity snip. And look at the hairdresser. He knows just how to use the scissors so they're safe. Tig, I know how you feel about your bunches. But having your hair cut doesn't mean you can't have bunches again. They might be a little smaller, that's all. But hey, having your hair cut means no more hair in your eyes. Having your hair cut means less tangles. Having your hair cut makes you feel all shiny and new. Oh, I'm happy with my hair cut, my happy, happy hair cut. Go for it, Tig. Get your hair cut. You'll love it. Yes, I thought. I want to be all shiny and new. Nothing to worry about. I'll have my hair cut. Snap, snap, snap. No more hair in my eyes. Snap, snap, snap. No more tangles. I'm happy with my hair cut. My happy, happy hair cut. Are you happy with that? Yeah. When the hairdresser saw Willie, he wasn't happy. What's that? Only a toy side. I like having my hair cut. I love woolly. Baby bed. When I was little, a baby came to stay for the day. I was very excited. So was woolly. And I made my little house ready to play. Look who it is. It's baby Ben. I like Baby Ben. Do you have a little look for me underneath Baby Ben's buggy and see if you can find a toy for him to play with? Baby Ben came with lots and lots of things. Nappy. Nappies. Nappies. Wipes. Wipes. Ooh. Clothes. Baby Ben didn't have many toys. Yeah, found it. Just a squeaky thing. <gasps> look. I wanted to show Baby Ben my toys. Mummy said no. He's only a baby. No, he isn't. Can he come to tea in my little house? I said. Mummy, can Baby Ben have tea in my face? Well, no, because.
because Baby Ben's just very little. No, said Mummy. I think it's time for Baby Ben's nap. Time for a nap, Baby Ben, said Mummy. Baby Ben isn't much fun. I waited for Baby Ben to go to sleep. When Baby Ben was asleep, I asked Mummy if she would like to come for tea. Mummy, would you like to come and have tea? No, sorry, Tig. I've just got a few things to catch up on before Baby Ben wakes up. Mummy said no. Oh, I said I'd play with my car. Beep, beep, beep. Said Mummy, you wake Baby Ben. Mummy likes the baby more than me, I said to Wooly. I could be a baby too, just like Baby Ben. Tig, shh, he's sleeping. I wish Baby Ben would go away. Hello. Suddenly, Baby Ben woke up again. Oh, dear. come on. Please move your toys. Mummy's grumpy, I said to Willy. Hey, Tig, Mummy's not grumpy. Mummy's just busy with Baby Ben. Come on, we'll give her a hand. Clean nappies. We'll need one of those. Baby wipes. We need them to make Baby Ben nice and clean all over. Clean clothes for Ben. <laughs> hey, Tig, and there's Ben's drinking bottle. Mummy will miss that. Off you go, Tig. Helping Mum's fun. Here, look what I found. Oh, thank you, Tig. Mummy was pleased. Mum, here, Mummy. Here's a nappy for Baby oh. Ben. Clever girl, and because you've been so good, you can help me change Baby Ben's nappy. Uh, yeah. Can I help Mummy change Baby Ben? <laughs> mummy, I'm mummy, put the baby right Oh, here. thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mummy, here's, here's Baby Ben's trousers. Oh, that is so helpful. Thank you. We made him all nice and clean again. It's only my toy spider to be there. <laughs> I like helping Mummy. I like Baby Ben too. I love Willy. Oh, nice. Choosing. When I was little, I went to buy some clothes with my Mummy. Willy came too. I can see some lovely dresses in here. Mummy said I needed a new dress and a new pair of shoes. At the dress shop, there were lots of dresses to choose from. I chose a sparkly dress. Mummy said it was very pretty for a party. But it's more pretty for a party? Mummy said I need a dress for every day to play in. Mummy showed me a red dress with pockets. I tried my new red dress. Yes, I said. I liked my new red dress. I like choosing. The next shop that we went to had a lift made of glass. I can see some pretty dresses. It was like flying. At the top of the lift we met Daddy. Hi Tig, a lovely new dress. Daddy liked my new dress. Okay then, do a fashion show. <laughs> Daddy bought new clothes too. You were quick choosing, said Mummy. You were very quick choosing all of that. Yeah, the man in the shop helped me. It was easy. Daddy said the man in the shop helped him choose. Let's go get the shoes. See you later. Bye. Here we are. Ooh, look at, at the shoe shop. They had lots of shoes. Hi there. Hi. I liked all of the shoes. So if you want to pop your foot in. The lady had a special measuring machine for feet. The lady said my feet were growing. I couldn't see them growing. The lady said, what colour shoes do you like? Blue, I said. 
Then I saw a red shoe. I want the red shoe, I said. I tried in the red shoe. So they both fit, but what ones do you like? Which shoe do you like, said the lady. Red and blue. You have to choose one colour shoe or the other. I wanted both shoes. One red, one blue. Mummy said, why don't you choose blue shoes to go with your new red dress? Well, why don't you have a wee think? Both, I said. Hey, Tig, choosing can be hard. Do I have this one or do I have that one? Or do I have both? Hmm. One blue shoe and one red shoe looks fun. But when you buy shoes, you buy them in pairs. Two shoes together, two shoes that match, two shoes the same colour. So you have to choose. Two blue shoes or two red shoes. Mmm. Hey, Tig, it's difficult, isn't it? Sometimes when you are choosing, you need a bit of help. Your daddy had the man in the shop to help him choose, but you have your mummy to help you choose. Mummy said blue shoes will look good with your red dress. Well, you like blue and red together, so why not choose the blue shoes for your red dress? Go for it, Tig! Yes, I thought. I like blue and red together. I'll choose the blue shoes to go with my red dress. Good choice. The lady put my old shoes in a box. When the lady saw Willy, she nearly dropped the box. It's already a toy spider. Trying really hard. On my way home, I played no stepping on the pavement cracks in my new blue shoes. I love Willy. I don't smile. When I was little, I went to nursery school every day. Willy came too. One day, a man was coming to take our pictures. Mummy wanted me to look pretty. Oh, you do have a pretty new dress, said Claire, my nursery teacher. Something very exciting's happening today, isn't it? Claire said, because the man was coming to take our pictures. So, I think we should put our aprons on to keep clean. We had to keep clean. When we went outside, we took our aprons off and put on our coats. I found a puddle. I had fun jumping in the puddle. When I came back inside, I wanted to paint. Take a look at your socks. I'm going to have to get you some clean ones. Oh dear, said Claire. Your socks are all wet and muddy. I painted a hand painting. Claire likes my painting. Oh. Oh no, your dress. Oops, I forgot to put my apron on. My dress was covered in paint. Claire gave me some new clothes to wear. The man came to take our pictures. When the man finished clattering, he started taking photos. We took it in turns to have our picture. Say, hey, you'll have to wait, said Claire. Mummy's coming with some clean clothes. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to change my clothes. I wanted my picture now. I felt grumpy. Mummy arrived. She had another dress. Claire fiddled with my hair. I felt grumpy. If she doesn't want to change, it doesn't matter. Never mind, said Mummy. If she's happy in those clothes. But I wasn't happy. I still felt grumpy. Who's next then? Next, said the man. I sat on the chair. Are you going to give me a great big smile? Smile, said the man. You sure? I don't I smile, smile, I said. OK, then. The man pressed the camera. Next, said the man. 
Are you next? I watched the other children having pictures. Whoa! I no know. one was grumpy, but I was grumpy. Hey Tig, it's not nice feeling grumpy. But there are so many little things that can make you feel grumpy. Brushing hair, pinchy hair slides, changing clothes, waiting for things to happen. Everything not being quite how you want it to be. But what can make you feel even grumpier is a grumpy face. And a grumpy face makes everyone else feel grumpy too. But if you smile, all the grumps will go away. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Give a smile and you'll feel happy all the day. Give a smile and all your grumpies will turn into your happies. Give a smile and make your grumpies go away. Go for it, Tig. Give a big smile for everyone. Yes, I thought. I don't want to feel grumpy anymore. I want to smile. Make everyone feel happy again. So I sat on the chair and gave the biggest smile ever. When the man saw Wooly, he didn't smile. It's only a tight spider. Oh. I love smiling. Mummy loves my smiling. Oh, look, that's a lovely picture of you, Tig. Especially in the picture. And I love Wooly. Supermarkets. When I was little, I went shopping with my mummy to a supermarket. You'll see it and you'll get a really good view. Willie came too. The supermarket was big. The supermarkets sold everything. Ironing board. Ironing boards. Toasters. Televisions. Washing machines. We didn't buy a washing machine. Mummy wanted food. I told Mummy where to find things. Carrots. Carrots. A cabbage, potatoes, tomatoes, onions, a melon, a big melon. That's a heavy one. Oh. Apples, oranges, bananas. I'll pop them in the back there. Grapefruit. Two. Two. Yeah, let's get two. And a pineapple. The pink one. The pink ones. I didn't want to be in a trolley seat. Yeah, yeah, no, but what are you going to do? Tell me what you're going to Stay do. Stay next to you. Stay next to me all the time. Good girl. Mummy said to keep close and hold onto the trolley. <laughs> <laughs> Can you manage? I helped Mummy put things into the trolley. Milk. You're so strong. <laughs> Mummy pushed the trolley. That's lots and lots of toys. I saw a fire engine. The fire engine had a ladder on top. I picked up the fire engine to show Mummy. When I looked, Mummy wasn't there. Tag. I ran down all the shelves and looked round the corner. Mummy wasn't there. Where was Mummy? I looked down some more shelves and some more shelves. No Mummy. I thought Mummy had left me. Mum, where are you? I thought I was all by myself. Then I saw Willy. Hi, I've lost my daughter. We're just in the toy section. Willie hadn't left me. Hey, Tig, Mummy hasn't left you, and Mummy hasn't run away. Mummy will be looking for you right now. Mummy loves you. Mummy will be just as worried as you are. You've just lost each other for a moment, that's all. When you ran up that way, Mummy was just behind you. Yes. <laughs> When you turned the corner, 
Mummy didn't know which way you'd gone. You both keep moving around and missing each other. What a laugh! So the best thing for you to do is stay in one spot, here by the fire engines and me. Mummy will tell the store people and they will find you in no time. So we'll stay here and Mummy will come round the corner any minute. I waited in the one place. <gasps> Tag. And Mummy came round the corner. <laughs> I was so happy to see Mummy. Very much. Willie had a ride. The man was surprised to see Willie. <gasps> I got a little spider. Right. I love my mummy. I love Willie! Getting better. You're not hungry. When I was little, I got ill. I didn't want any tea. And I hurt all over. What's wrong? I don't feel very well. Oh. Mummy took my temperature. Oops, you're a bit hot, Teg, said Mummy. Let's get you to bed. I didn't feel well. Hello. When Daddy came home, he came to see me. Are you okay? You okay, Tig? Just got a bit of a temperature. No, I said. I don't feel well. Wooly cuddled in beside me. I fell asleep. When I woke up next morning, Mummy looked at me in a funny way. I know what's wrong with you. You've got chicken pox. I see what's wrong with you, Tig, said Mummy. You've got chicken pox. I look like a speckledy thing with little red spots. We'll have to get you better, said Mummy. In the day, Mummy read me lots of stories. My spots itched. Mummy put nice cool stuff all over the spots. I even had spots in my mouth. Mummy gave me lollies. Mummy made me lots of mashy meals. And sloppy drinks. This one is Bernard. Bernard and <laughs> At night, Mummy gave me puppet gloves to wear. So I didn't scratch. I like my puppet gloves. When Daddy came home, we played. We built things on the table. Every day my spots didn't itch quite so much. Oh, oh no red. Soon I was painting and drawing and doing things myself. Sometimes I felt a bit better. Sometimes I didn't. One day Mummy said, Tig, I think you're getting a bit better. Would you like Angel round to play? Tig, would you like Angel to come and play? Yes. <gasps> and guess what? She's got chicken pox as well. Yeah. <laughs> Angel's got chicken pox too, said Mummy. I was excited. I got all my toys out for Angel to play with. I played jumping from cushion to cushion. Suddenly, I didn't feel well again. I didn't want to see Angel. The doorbell went. That'll be Angel. There's Angel. I don't want to see anybody because I don't feel very well. No, I said. I don't want to see Angel. Hey, Tig, getting better can take a long time. Sometimes you feel up, sometimes you feel down. Sometimes you feel wobbly, sometimes you feel strange. Getting better is like doing everything for the first time all over again. Whee! Like walking in the street. Or going back to school. Or seeing Angel again. But every time you do something new again, you'll feel a little bit better. So go for it, Tig. Say hi to Angel. It will make you feel like your old self again. Yes, I thought. I want to be my old self again. You got spots. I want to see my friend. 
I want to get better. Angel and me played. When Mummy saw Willy with spots. <gasps> oh. It's only a toy spider. Oh. I like getting better. <laughs> ben, 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 ben. I love Willy. Subway. When I was little, I liked going on the subway train. Willy likes going on the subway train too. It was fun going down under the ground. It was scary and exciting. When the train rumbled and roared out of the tunnel, it squeaked and hissed and stopped. It was like magic when the door slid open and we got on. I was so happy rattling and shuggling through the tunnels on the subway train. I love the subway train. Wooly loved the subway train too. One day my friend Angel came to play. We played subway trains all day. We drew pictures of subway trains. We made tunnels for the subway trains. Wooly pretended to be a train. How about you build tunnels all around the room and then you can be the subway trains? Yeah. yeah. I think this could be Mummy gave us lots of old sheets and blankets. <laughs> we made tunnels all over the place. We hooted and went through our tunnels. Sometimes we bumped. Mummy likes our fun. Who wants to go on a real subway? Who wants a ride on a real subway? Before we left, we played sliding doors. Thank you. We played subway trains all the way to the station. OK, we have to be sensible now. We're going to go on a real subway, so no more playing. When we got to the station, we played sliding doors no more playing, oh, said Mummy. But me and Angel were having now, fun. Then okay. Mummy stopped us. She no stood between play. us okay, we so we couldn't play. Come on, said Mummy. Going underground wasn't fun anymore. The subway train wasn't exciting. There was no magic. Mummy had spoiled our fun. Hey Tig, it doesn't seem fair when someone spoils your fun. It's not nice when someone stops your game. But there are some places where it's wrong to play. There are some places where you need to take special care. The subway is no place to run around and play. Everywhere on the subway, things are moving. The escalator's going up and down. Trains arriving and leaving. Doors opening and closing. People coming and going. So Mummy isn't spoiling your fun. Mummy is taking special care of you and Angel. But hey Tig, that doesn't mean you can't still have fun and enjoy the ride. Just sit back and relax. No need to play a game when you have all the fun of a real train. Go for it, Tig. Say sorry to Mummy and no more train games until you're home again. Yes, I thought. Mummy was right. A real subway is no place to play. Sorry, Mummy, I said. Oh, thank you, Tig. <laughs> Mummy let me and Angel sit together. We had fun on the real subway train. Just looking and shiggling along. When we got home, we played subway trains again. When Mummy saw Willy, she nearly <gasps> fell over. It's only a toy spider. I like subway trains. And I love Willy. The piano. When I was little, I wanted to play the piano. So Mummy took me for a piano lesson. The piano lesson was in a big music school where lots of people learned music. My piano 
piano teacher was Mr. Tonka. When Mr. Tonka played his piano, he played all the notes together, very fast. Now, do you want to learn to play the piano? Yes, I said. So, so Mr. Tonka showed me the all the notes. The low note. Well done. The middle note. This one? Yeah. And the high note. That one? Yeah, that one. Well done. I played all the notes together, like Mr. Tonka. OK, why don't you come back next week and we can learn about the going up notes and the going down notes. We'll be forward to that, Mr. Tonka. Come OK, take. see you next week. Bye-bye. And my next piano lesson, Mr. Tonka was in his tiny room playing one of his pianos. How are you doing? I've written some notes on a page. Mr. Tonka had written me some music dots. The music dots went up and down. Let's see if we can play a scale. Now. You want to try that? I played the notes up like the dots. That's great. Okay. I didn't want to play the note one by one anymore. I played the notes all together, like Mr. Tonka. Take next time, next week, say Mr. Tonka, to we'll get the, the names notes named. These notes. When I went for my piano lesson again, Mr. Tonka was very excited. Hello, come and sit down. Look what I've been doing for you. He had pictures for the notes. An apple, a ball, a cat. See if you can play the apple note. Play me the apple notes, said Mr. Tonka. I didn't want to play the apple notes. I played all the notes, like Mr. Tonka. I've just got to go. Mr. Tonka left. Dick, you have to listen to what Mr. Tonka asks you to do. I know how to do the piano. No, I said. I want to play all the notes together. I played some more, but the notes didn't sound quite right. Hey, Tig, whee! It might be fun playing all the notes together, but some notes don't sound nice together. Some notes sound better by themselves. If you play each note by itself, you can play a tune. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, Half a pound of treacle. When Mr Tonka plays the piano, it might look like he's playing all the notes, but Mr Tonka plays only the notes he needs. Mr Tonka listened to his teacher and learnt what notes to play. Go for it, Tig! Whee! Listen to Mr Tonka and learn how to play the piano. Yes, I thought. I want to learn to play the piano, so I'll listen to Mr. Tonka and do what he tells me. When Mr. Tonka came back, he told me how to play a tune. We played the tune together. Mr. Tonka teaching me. I like going to my piano lessons. I love Willy. Hey, Tig. <laughs> I love Willy.